A fire takes the edge off a crisp start for this weary group of men in the middle of Arnhem Land in the Northern Territory. This unlikely gang of stockmen, scientists and rangers have been thrust together on a collective mission years in the making. You ready for another cracker of a morning? Not even a global pandemic and its logistical challenges could stop it happening. Obviously with the delays, with the tags, the technology, you know, US Postal Service going on strike and, you know, you name it, it's just, is this ever going to kick off the ground and get it happening? Over two weeks, they'll muster and tag 500 buffalo in some of the most remote and difficult terrain in the north. This really, you know, large scale tracking project, probably of the largest scale from a wildlife or a buffalo tracking perspective that's ever been done, um, particularly in Australia. Preparation is just as important as the actual catching. The harsh country is tough on the tools. Doing a little bit of patch up on those bull catches, Kind of funny watching them though, getting a bit sad for their bull catcher. Yeah, that arm's been copping a bit of a pizzling. But... Gear in order, it's game on. It's a task best attacked from all angles. In the sky, the pilot looks for a mob. He pushes the animals towards a floodplain where the bull catchers are poised. A signal? and the chase is on. A job that certainly has its perils. Just make sure everybody's out of the road, because we all come out here to do this job, we all want to go home. Once caught, the buffalo has to be secured for the scientists to fit the solar charge GPS tags. The novel part, I suppose, is then that links through to a space-based satellite system. So while we take GPS recordings, we then send them off via satellite um, and into our data systems. Some are none too happy about their new accessory. Relax, relax. Blood samples are also collected for important data. It's for disease surveillance, so we're just looking at what sort of diseases the animals are carrying. Um, everything from agricultural diseases to human transmissible ones. Number four. Number four, yeah. It's a rare opportunity for the scientists to gain important biosecurity data. These are areas that animals aren't regularly sampled. There's very little surveillance that happens in these areas. So now we're starting to build those data sets and that understanding of the baseline disease status of animals. So then we can understand how that disease status may change. Some of these diseases that are really threatening our um, livestock populations at the moment, potentially, or hopefully don't get into the country. The project extends across 22,000 square kilometres. Next, these scientists will head to Cape York where they'll tag another 500 wild cattle. Some of the rangers have never done this before. Not that you can tell. It's a pretty crazy job to do too, dangerous. But you always got to keep motivated and just got to be on point how you do it, the roping and all that stuff. Gets you panic a little bit in the air. You get scared? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, but sometimes you got to not to fear the buffalo much. Because if you do feel a bit afraid, you're going to get yourself hurt someday. Mm. So try not to be afraid of the buffalo. Yeah, if you hesitate. Yeah, yeah. Easier said than done, though. Yeah. <laughs> Catching and putting in the trees, eh? Yep. Sometimes they get a bit wild and sometimes it's easy. Others are old hands at catching, just different animals. I've never done buffalo before. This has been really interesting for me. Quite a different animal to work in cattle. Can't tell. You still look pretty proficient out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's the whole point of it, I think. Just get them as quick as we can. Buffalo catching is a family legacy for some of these rangers. I used to see my uncle do my string around here when I was as a boy. Yep. I wow. to follow him and see him how to do it. That's pretty special. Yep. And there's a friendly rivalry over who's the best. We've got Weeby and, and Josh, our two teams, so having a bit of fun, I know, professional as well, but having a little tally on, on who, who gets most and they're neck on neck at the moment. Yeah, 
Not one to stand on the sidelines, they insisted I jump in for a ride too. On face value, the project seems simple, but the Smart Herd initiative combines artificial intelligence, space technology and local Indigenous knowledge to deliver one of the world's largest remote herd management systems. This new technology, it's been field tested. This is the first time it's been deployed like, properly on, on country on wild animals. So that's a bit of a, just to see if it actually works and how well it works. As soon as a tag is attached, the data starts flowing in and will keep coming for up to two years or until the tag falls off. And so these are all the tags? These are all the tags that are out there at the moment. So, so far we've tagged 274 buffalo on this trip, mm -hmm. which I think is, you know, it's a really good start. Um, you can see we've got a really nice spread of yeah, animals right across the landscape. They've already gone pretty far. They're delivering real-time, geographically accurate insights into herd density and accessibility, even in the middle of nowhere. There's a lot of satellites up in space now that are, that are feeding data through. Wow. So, you know, this is live data that's come through. It's gone from a buffalo up into space by one satellite, back down to the ground, and now we're reaching it via another satellite system. Um, it's a brave it, new world. Exactly, it's a brave new world. <laughs> Combining GPS data from tagged animals, weather information as well as AI, the project will map out the best routes for rangers to reach and manage the feral animals. They'll also have insights into animal numbers. In this patch alone, there's estimated to be around 22,000 buffalo, but nobody actually knows. So a large part of that is really giving us a better understanding of how many animals there are, and then also understanding how those animals are then moving across the landscape and utilising them. What is certain is the destruction of the landscape. Seeing what these buffaloes do to country is devastating. There's too many, you know. Um, they're sort of definitely concentrated to, you know, springs and waterways. Um, and, and yeah, their impact is, is on the environment is far greater than probably anything else we have, you know, pigs. Oh, pigs are bad, you know, and feral cattle and horses and that. But yeah, the water buffalo certainly, you know, of those really sensitive areas, uh, the springs and that, yeah, they, they have a huge impact. Knowing where the animals are concentrated, the rangers can target conservation efforts to protect biodiversity, water quality and restore degraded landscapes. So they actually start mapping out the movements, herd movements, where they're all going. You know, you could potentially use that to help, like, muster or remove animals off country if you have to. Um, yeah, I'm interested in things like the spread of weeds. So once you start tracking your feral animal movements through the IPA, you know, you might be able to get some other data as well that will help and you can actually look at, you know, which water holes are going to get thrashed at different times of year and, you know, maybe put that to some benefit of use. The data collected could also help turn the pests into economic, environmental and cultural opportunities for Indigenous communities across the region. Buffalo have potential to be a valuable resource in Northern Australia as a commodity and protein source. The idea of this system is really to be a little bit agnostic about what that data and um, that information gets used for and allow the land managers to make that choice. So whether or not they want to use these animals from a mustering perspective to make money in selling them into the live, tra live animal market, or if they want to manage for environmental or cultural benefits, um, you know, this system's really being set up to allow them to do all of those things and to balance and trade off of those things as well. Space Cows is a $4 million four-year initiative led by Australia's National Science Agency, CSIRO, in partnership with the federal government. But scientists are hopeful it could lead to other projects managing large wild herds. As for the troops on the ground, the next leg is in the wilds of West Arnhem Land. Nobody wants the job to end. They're quite happy sitting down here doing what we're doing. <laughs> like we are an eclectic bunch, um, but it works, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Better than the city, yeah, out bush, peaceful. Finding rockets. Yeah. 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 Yeah.